your marks, ready, set, let's go. Top of pro, got the data to show. Putting maps on the screen, yeah, you know. From streets to peaks, we're in the know. Ain't no mystery, we got the data clean. Visualizing scenes, creating the dream. Drag and drop, yeah, it's our routine. Looking at the map, seeing what's unseen. All right, we will get started here. Now that we got everything started, welcome. Uh, this is our July meeting for the San Diego Tableau User Group. Uh, welcome everybody in person and welcome everyone who's uh, come in virtually. We appreciate it. And for those of you just coming in, please make sure you sign in. We have pizza in the back and drinks. And for everyone else, uh, the food's terrible. You want to enjoy it, so don't feel jealous. <laughs> Today, for our agenda, we'll start with uh, welcome and introductions. We'll talk through a, a couple of projects that are going on, uh, in addition to uh, something else that involves maps. So I know we're very excited today. Uh, we have Dennis Cow presenting to us. Uh, we're very fortunate he was here for a conference, and he offered to come and visit our group. So thank you so much, Dennis. And then we'll... Uh, hang out a little bit and, and network and ask questions and have a great time. So uh, we're the leadership team. I'm Luigi. Uh, I work for a company called Direct Avenue. We're on the vice president of operations. Uh, we're a media buying agency. Uh, we buy time for linear and connected television. And I'm the primary dashboard author and I'm in charge of our uh, operations. Uh, also with me here today is Kayla Swain. Uh, she's hiding in the back, but she's present as well, and uh, she helps run the group. Uh, Ashley Zong is not here today, but she's our third leader, and uh, they help us put on great meetings. And if you're local to San Diego and you're uh, seeing this later, please contact us. We'd love to have you come on out. All right. Are you a slacker? 
do you use Slack or on LinkedIn? If you are, you're in luck. We have a Slack channel for the San Diego Tableau user group, and we also have a LinkedIn group. Uh, this time, I managed to remember to put QR codes. So if you're not part of that, uh, please go ahead and, and join. We have further discussions there and, and talk about ideas for meetings and help each other out. And it's a great place to connect when we're not in person. Uh, secondly, we're always looking for speakers. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Dennis fly out. But we also want people that are here in San Diego that want to present you know, whether you just want to practice presenting or you have great ideas, please, we'd love to have you come in and teach us something new. Uh, great support here. And most of the times we're not hybrid, so uh, you won't necessarily be uh, presenting uh, to dozens and dozens of people who are also logged in virtually. And if you work somewhere and are interested in, in uh, hosting a meeting where we can come together, let us know as well. Uh, we're always looking for speakers and spaces to have our meetings. Uh, benefit, you don't have to go far from work. We'll come to you. And uh, it, it really helps us out. So if you're interested, contact one of us and or on Slack or LinkedIn. That'd be fantastic. And also in the same vein, uh, if anyone uh, wants to sponsor our user group, whether you're with with a company or, or or know someone, that'll help us put on more events, uh, maybe put on some more fun things, go to other venues and and do other things outside of what we're doing here. Uh, again, contact me, and uh, uh, it'll help us put on more fantastic uh, things for your entertainment and education. Education is key. That's why you're here tonight. Uh, You've met uh, us, uh, the leaders. Does anyone else want to introduce themselves and say hi, or you have any announcements, uh, whether maybe you're, you're looking for work or more people are hiring or just anything else that's going on? Uh, that's what we're here is to uh, get to know each other. And if not, that's OK, too. I uh, don't want to necessarily put anyone on the spot. That's right. I'll, I'll do what I do best. I'll keep talking here. Um, and that said, uh, again, keep in touch with us and we're going to have some more events coming up. We're playing our next event. And then, uh, we're also uh, earlier in the spring, we had a, a data plus coffee. We're looking to do that again. If you have any ideas about a uh, good place where we can get together, quiet place, have some coffee, talk about where we want, what we want to do with the group and what we want to learn. Uh, also, let me know. The last time we did it was right before a conference, and, and we did it down in Seaport Village. And that was nice because uh, uh, got us a little energized before conference. Now it, it can be anywhere. So, got any ideas? Let us know. All right. Iron Quest. Who here has heard of Iron Quest? All right. Well, uh, have, who's heard of Iron Viz? All right. So Iron Quest is a community project that's run by Sarah Bartlett. And it, it's uh, done a few times a year. And it, it's done to help prepare you, get ready, whether you want to participate in Iron Viz or you just want to learn how it goes. That They come up with uh, your secret ingredient or your data set, like in Iron Chef. And they send it out and then you, you put together this your, your your viz and you submit it and then they get graded and uh, the people putting on the project also look through it all and then they give you feedback so it not only gives you practice but it also gives you that feedback to help you learn and you know working on this stuff all the time and then Taking yourself outside your comfort zone is a really good way, great way to learn. I've participated in a few of these, and they're fantastic. And this month's theme is maps. Maps are awesome. Maps are fantastic. I may not be as excited as Dennis over here, but I've seen him present uh, a bunch of times, and, and there's so much you can do, and, and they're so powerful in what you can show. Uh, if you're interested 
in learning or interested in maps or just want to try something different, I really encourage you to uh, join in. And uh, hello, welcome everybody. Uh, please come on in. Um, it's also a co-hosted, there's a new uh, Tableau user group called Data Plus Maps. Does anyone here know anything about the new user group, Data Plus Maps? So, it's, it's, it's brand new. They're going to be having their first meeting. I believe it's in August. And uh, they're helping put on this event. So the, the user group leaders, I believe you're a user group. Dennis is a user group leader for uh, Data Plus Maps. There's two core QR codes here. One is uh, to IronQuest. It brings you to the, the landing page and gives you more information. And the other one is a link to join their first meeting. I definitely recommend that uh, you, you check it out. And uh, yeah, and, and talk about user groups. There's a whole ton of user groups for all kinds of interests. We're in a regional one here, but then there's maps, there's data plus women, which we'll talk a little bit about on the next slide. Uh, I'm involved with the uh, marketing and market research there's a ton of different user groups for your different interests or, or even the uh, places where you work like higher education, veteran affairs and different things. I encourage you to check out user groups as well and see what's out there. There's new ones starting all the time. And, and if you're interested in starting a user group, they're actually accepting applications now. I didn't mark down when that deadline is, but all that's available online. And if you have any questions, please come see me and I can help you along with that. But uh, yeah, definitely get involved in Iron Quest and especially this month with maps. You're gonna be so excited from today's presentation. You're gonna to wanna to run out, participate and join the Tableau, the Data Plus Maps user group. Fantastic. All right, speaking of uh, other Tableau user groups, uh, there's a, uh, a relatively new one called uh, Data Plus Women uh, New England chapter. So uh, across the world, there's different chapters for Data Plus Women. And this new one, they're putting on a, uh, an event called Data Viz Showcase 2024. And the topic is da any data that's related to women. And uh, like the uh, Iron Quest, you, you, you will get your data set you put together your viz and you submit it. And then the, the, the people with the Data Plus Women, uh, uh, the New England Tableau user group, they'll go through the vizes and, and there'll be three winners. They haven't, at last I checked, and that's what the prizes are. But I mean, pride of completing a project is number one for me, obviously. But there'll be other prizes as well. And uh, you'll get uh, featured in their user group meeting and and the, the people that run this group are fantastic as well and and uh, definitely check it out the QR code will take you to a LinkedIn page that gives more information and if I mess that up contact me and then I will get you in the right place uh, but yeah those are two things going on and uh, great ways to get involved and, and, and learn. So any questions on what uh, Iron Quest is or, or uh, the Visualize Her or anything else related to Tablet user groups, let me know. All right, excellent. All right, well, we're getting ready for a future presentation here. Uh, we have a... Uh, Dennis Cow, he's uh, here for another conference, and he has offered to come and present to us in person. I don't, uh, for those, how many here uh, were at uh, the, the uh, uh, Tableau conference this year? He pre he's uh, pre he presented at a conference and had a wonderful session. Uh, anytime you can get a chance to see him speak, it's a real treat and. We are lucky to have him here today. And also, yesterday was his birthday. So we're celebrating today. So, so be extra nice. So be extra nice and applied. <laughs> While we're getting set, set up here, we'll play some more music. And please, everyone, welcome Dennis.
That's all right. I may play on here. No. Okay. Oh, I figure I'm on the camera here too. So. Here, let me. Uh... All right, Dennis is getting situated here. I hope everyone enjoyed some of that music. If you are interested in getting those tracks, please let me know. And if there are any questions, uh, drop them in the chat, and we will do our best to, to catch the ones that are here uh, virtually. Um, and then for everyone else here, we'll, we'll take your questions, and uh, let's get started. So I see, yeah, I see Tableau and yeah, it looks good. See that. Okay. Great. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's ago and just kind of completely kind of changed the kind of the way I do my work. So now these days I probably visualize 95% of my maps in Tableau, but I still do some of the data management and things like that in in, G in a GIS software. And I use QGIS specifically because it's free, um, but I was uh, trained in ArcGIS uh, when I was in my PhD program. Um, I write a little kind of occasional thread or uh, kind of it, and turn it, it turns into a blog because I get it published on um, type fully, but it's a little thread. Sometimes I talk a little bit about how I kind of my workflow around. I create things in QGIS um, or prepare the data and then bring it into Tableau. And so kind of be on the lookout if, if that's of interest to you. And I'll talk a little bit about, about that workflow in a minute. Um, so this is kind of my Tableau journey. So I discovered Tableau November 2020. It was kind of the COVID pandemic. I was kind of searching for things to do. And during that time, I discovered Tableau and really kind of fell in love with Tableau. And you'll see uh, this was the first map I prepared. I didn't even know how to bring data into Tableau. And so this is data straight out of the software. <laughs> the percentage of Asian Americans in the United States by, I, think, I believe, census tract. I didn't even know what the distinction between a sheet and a dashboard. Um, and so this is basically a screenshot of the sheet, right? Um, this was my first public viz, uh, Makeover Monday, um, which is another community project that you may have heard of, provide data each, each Monday. and people who want to kind of work and practice visiting, uh, they can use that data and then share it and get some feedback from the community and things like that. So this was my first one. And of course it included a map. 
I had to conclude in that. And this was three and a half years ago when I created um, a Baboa Park. And I'll kind of go over some of the elements of this and hopefully kind of share some of my tips, um, some of the kind of best practices and lessons learned kind of doing using Tableau to create maps um, coming from a GIS perspective, right? Um, I think the kind of the, the interesting thing is I, I learned mapping using a GIS tool, which is a specialized software, right? You know, you can, it, it's specially made to handle spatial data, whereas Tableau wasn't originally that, right? And, 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 but now it's getting better, but there's still kind of little things that you have to kind of think about moving from the GIS world, but trying to emulate some of the things that GIS software can do really easily and doing it in Tableau, that's kind of what I've been trying to work on. And so uh, this is an example of, of kind of a map I created just a couple of months ago, right, prior to Tableau conference in preparation for my presentation. And I'll kind of go over some of the elements and we'll take a closer look at that one in a minute. And I'm a firm believer of practice, practice, practice. And you'll see that over the course, um, I've done about, since, since discovering Tableau, I've been practicing as much as I can. And um, I have maybe about 200 visits on my Tableau public profile now. Um, a large majority of them include maps. And you'll notice that I think it's improved, I think my maps that I do for my regular work, right? So this was 2013, then I discovered Tableau a couple years later. This was a map that I recently just published in an article here. And you'll notice that there is, I mean, at least for me, this one looks definitely better than this. Kind of the colors, the use of kind of um, like the points, trying to distinguish them, distinguishing the wards. Um, this is Washington, D.C., and these, are, these dots are um, dental services in, in Washington, D.C. Um, compared to this, where I'm not sure what I was doing, kind of looking back, I'm a little embarrassed by this map, but this was published in an article. Uh, this is something I did about 10 years ago. And you notice it's the same thing, right? These points are kind of substance abuse treatment facilities. Um, but for some reason, I, I use triangles. For some reason, I use the, the color yellow, and they don't really pop as much in contrast to the, what, what I don't know if you can see this. But so the yellow are the African-American hotspots, like areas where there are high concentration of African-Americans uh, and so forth. And, and, it's, it, and you'll notice that I think it's really improved my work just practicing as much as I can. Okay, and this was done not in Tableau, this was done in QGIS. So um, I think the practice that I've kind of been able to do, I think has honed my work as well. And so hopefully, you know, that's kind of a key lesson that I've learned. Um, I think the impetus of this presentation was prior to Tableau uh, conference in May, um, I did a series of maps and I had kind of ulterior motives in doing so. Um, first, I wanted to, um, I was excited about Tableau Conference. I was excited about coming back to San Diego, a place that I visit often when I lived in LA. Um, also, I was trying to generate some material for my presentation, right? And so I created, here, here I'm showcasing nine, but I created about 10, 11 maps of San Diego um, using kind of different techniques. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll share some of those um, as we go along this presentation. I'm happy to entertain questions throughout. Um, so feel free to raise your hand and we can try to facilitate that. Um, a couple of caveats. I know many of you are probably not in the space that allows you to spend too much time on maps, right? <laughs> you know, you want to create a map want to create it quickly, and I totally understand that, right? But I think there are things you can think about, even in the space that you're working in, to create maps that are effective, right? And in my mind, a beautiful map is, first and foremost, an effective map. It's a clear map, it's a clean map that really conveys whatever message or story that you're trying to convey. And there are kind of techniques 
that cartographers and map makers and map designers use in order to enhance the effectiveness of a map. And so we'll kind of talk a little bit about some of those as we go. Okay. Um, so that workbook, which links to all the nine maps, is available um, on my Tableau Public. All the data, if you're interested, that I use to create all those maps is also available um, through, in my Google Drive folder. And you can link to that as well if you're interested in kind of practicing. Um, most of them are shape files, which some of you may or may not be familiar with. And we'll, we'll kind of talk a little bit about those as we go. Um, but if you're interested, feel free. Uh, the data is there. And I think I'll supply this workbook to you all in some way, like, yeah. like make this available to. Yeah, to we'll, we'll distribute it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I I covered these kind of tips in my Tableau conference, but I'm going to go over them kind of briefly, but then really just go into Tableau and kind of tweak and work with maps. Okay. Um, so first and foremost. Um, tip number one is, uh, I think a simple map is the best map, right? Um, maps can be very powerful tools, but if they become too cluttered with stuff, then it becomes very difficult to, for the reader to figure out what's going on, okay? And my rule of thumb is one map equals one message. And if you're trying to convey too many messages in a single map, maybe you need multiple. Um, and, and so kind of the three steps to kind of think about is focus on your phenomenon. So what, what is it that you really want to showcase or highlight? Okay. And, and I'll show you an example in a minute where I really wanted to just highlight all the attractions in Balboa Park. Okay. Um, and then you need something to show, to kind of provide some context, right? Um, you can't just have a bunch of points. Um, but you don't need everything, right? And so um, oftentimes in Tableau, you, you, you bring something into uh, the, the view, and then Mapbox has this base map, right, with a bunch of layers. But oftentimes, you don't need all that stuff. And I'll, I'll show you kind of an example in a minute. And then you leave everything out, else out, right? Provide kind of the minimal context, and then leave everything else out. So for example, so this, so this is a kind of a close-up. Um, um, I don't know if you can see it kind of back where you are, but this is a close-up of the map that I just showed of Balboa Park. I was super excited to come back to San Diego. I used to come, when I lived in LA area, I used to come to San Diego quite a bit because it's two hours away, it's beautiful, nice beaches, um, things like that. And Balboa Park was one of my favorite places to go. Um, I didn't realize there were so many things there. I don't, I don't know. This is different from like I don't. I don't think I've been there like for at least ten years. But I was just amazed at everything that was there. Right. I didn't realize that there was so much so much stuff. And maybe that's something that's kind of changed over the course of the last decade or so. Um, so basically, the purpose of this was really I wanted to showcase everything that Balboa Park had to offer. That was kind of the main purpose. And so. I got data on all the different attractions, museums, uh, gardens, things like that, and started plotting them, right? And so, in, in trying to keep this simple, and maybe this might be a little busy now that I'm looking at it, right? I wanted to really highlight the attractions. So those are kind of big points with, with uh, really bright colors. Um, I numbered them so then I, you know, so people can kind of decipher which ones are which. Um, but everything else I tried to kind of put in the background. Okay, so one, one, one thing that I usually use as context are roads, because especially major highways, freeways, major streets, those often provide enough context to allow the reader to know kind of generally where that is, right? We're never going to use Tableau to say, oh, here, here reader, here is the directions to so-and-so, or such-and-such a place, right? We have Google Maps. 
We have things like that, right? So we're never gonna, I don't think Tableau's ever gonna get to a point where we, you know, um, never get to a point where we're actually asking users to navigate from one place to the other, right? Um, but I wanted to provide, and so these are the roads, right? So I wanted to provide enough context to allow the reader to do that. I also wanted to distinguish the San Diego Zoo, and this is in gray. Um, underneath the points, I have all the buildings, and, and for some reason, you know, maybe I would lighten those a little bit, but I wanted to highlight the buildings in Balboa Park in some way, but somewhat kind of lesser in the, in the hierarchy compared to the, the attractions. Um, these are the buildings for the Naval Medical Center, and I and because that's not in Balboa Park, I decided to make them gray, right? And then eventually I included a separate line boundary for the entire park, okay? Things that I left out, everything outside of the park, right? So if I plotted this and had a map box background, it would have everything around Balboa Park. For this particular map, I didn't feel that was necessary, right? And so I left everything out here. Okay, and how did I do that? These are all separate shape, shape files that I brought into Tableau. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. And some of you might be in, in, might not be in the space where you're bringing in spatial files, but I would encourage you to kind of think about it because it really gives you a lot more control over what your map looks like. And I'll, talk, I'll, I'll kind of talk about that a little bit in, in, in a minute as well. One thing you'll also notice is the way Balboa Park is situated, I made it positioned it as the central thing, but you'll notice that there's some white space. Now we, in data visualization, we talk about white space as we wanna maximize or take advantage of white space because it, it makes our visualizations clearer, right? Our dashboards clear. In this case, because geography has inherent white space, Sometimes we have to take advantage and maximize the white space here. So this part right here was empty, so I put some text here. This plot right here, this white space, I put the title. And then this entire right part of the Balboa Park, right there where there were no attractions, and I think, I think it's just trails and, and things, right, out there. Um, I decided to include the list of attractions here because I felt that in, this was kind of inherent white space that I can utilize otherwise. Does that make sense? And so try to maximize those things. And of course, you know, this gets into the floating versus tile kind of debate. This is all floating, right? Which is, you know, again, <laughs> you know, maybe you're not in the space to be doing floating things, but something to think about, like, let's say you were you tiled this, you know, all the attractions are here. I mean, you have some open space here, or white space, that makes it, the map, I, in my mind, just empty in some ways, right, that you can maximize. And it's also space, real estate on the dashboard to kind of think about as well. Does that make sense? Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, all these little elements in a minute. Okay, second tip is, don't use defaults, right? Or don't accept them automatically, right? So let me give you an example. Um, this is a quote by Jeff Aiken, um, who's a cartographer from New Zealand. Um, we wanna make deliberate choices, right? So when we think about defaults, right? Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Sometimes there's too much, but we wanna think intentionally about the defaults. Right, so just like in the, when we create a bar chart, Tableau automatically has grid lines and, and, you know, and things like that, right? Those are the defaults, but we actively take them out because we intentionally think we don't need them, right? Same when you create a map. The map box layer comes in. Do we need all that stuff, okay? So, so here, um, so I have a blank worksheet here, but I'm just gonna bring in the places in Balboa Park here. 
So automatically, so these are all the places that I mapped out in the other map. And you'll notice, you know, Mapbox, of course, has this layer, okay? Now, one thing I don't want, one of the main reasons I don't like Mapbox is once this happens, this layer essentially becomes an image. We can't do anything to this What in the Tableau, right? Once we bring it into Tableau. Of course, we can create a custom map box, right? And, and do that. But once it becomes comes in here, there's no way to, for me to kind of play with what this looks like. I can get rid of some of this stuff, right? Like I don't need all these street names, right? Because for me, at least in terms of my map, it wasn't important, right? Um, so let me kind of center this a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I can, you know, and you know, so so some of this default. So I I felt like I didn't need anything outside of the park boundaries, right? But with Mapbox. It provides all of that, and let me so let me take it out then. The problem with that is there's only so much you can do, right? So if I take out the streets, it takes out the streets for everything, but I wanted to have the streets in Balboa Park. Like we can take out certain things, right? We can add certain things, right? But but you're you're kind of limited in what you can do, right? Of course, we can go into to Mapbox, customize it, and then bring it and use that custom base layer there. But again, it becomes it, it's essentially an image, and you can't play with it at that point. Like, what if I wanted to change the color of these points? Then I have to go to Mapbox and then re-customize it and then bring it back in, right? And so one kind of um, one reason, I think a big reason for using your own spatial files is once you bring those in, now they become data that you can format, right? They come, become features that you can format. So once you bring in the streets, so let me bring in the streets really quick. I'm gonna turn this all off. And once I bring in the streets for Balboa Park, I can start playing with them. Oops. I'm bringing the streets below. Like, so now I can adjust the, the size. I can turn them kind of grayish, like so. And already, you can see, now I can start playing with the base map, quote unquote, Right? It's not really base map, it's actual data that I'm bringing in, right? But it, now the base map, I can adjust it depending on what I want to do with the main data that I want to highlight, which are the points or the attractions about the little part. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Dennis, Ojo here. Sorry, I have a question. Oh, sure. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt the flow of your... Um, no, not at all, not at all. Okay, good to see Ojo you. Ojo from yeah. Toronto. Hi. So my question is, um, you brought in the shape files, and that's fantastic. Would you mind sharing how I can source these shape files? Where can yes. I find a repository of them? Yes, I, I will I will go through some of that um, a little bit later on. All right. Thank is that you. okay? Yeah, absolutely. So, but I, I will talk to it. I'll speak to it a little bit. Um, I am a social work professor. Um, I don't have a lot of funding. So almost everything that I use is public data. So the, these roads I access from OpenStreetMap. Open these points for attractions, I manually put them into an Excel file. Um, some of the other things, like if you're going into kind of demographics and things like that, I rely on census data. And census provides a lot of shape files also for some of the designations. So like if you're interested in post, postal codes or zip codes, if you're interested in school districts, if you're interested in census tracts 
or city boundaries, coastlines, things like that. Census, the Census Bureau, the U.S. Census Bureau provides a lot of that. Okay, um, so I, I I work I map on the cheap, right? Like I don't have any funding for a lot of this data. Obviously, there's there's big companies that provide this data, maybe cleaner, maybe maybe you know easier to use in some ways, but I I get I access a lot of this from just public places that and I'll, I'll provide I'll try to share some links um, to the co-leaders um, that they can provide so I'll include them maybe in the workbook as well does that help Joel? awesome okay. thank you cell file you uh, put the, did you just put the coordinates essentially so um, let's see how I did this one so on So I, ha I found the places from the Balboa Park sure. website, okay? Um, in some cases, they had the address, but they also had a map, right, that I can use. And so I ended up going to Google Maps, and you can click on a point, right-click, and then you can get the latitude and longitude coordinates pretty easily, right? And I can show you that really quick. Yeah. So you did use the coordinates? Yes. In this case, I used the coordinates. Okay. But I don't know if, if people have used um, um, Google Maps in this way. So, um, so for example, if I wanted to get the, the the Museum of Art, if I wanted to get those coordinates, I right click, and then you have the coordinates right there. Okay, you select it, and then you can plop it um, directly into your into your spreadsheet into your data. Sorry, it's taking a while for Google. Um, Excel. Like so. Um, you might have to like, um, it, it, it's in one cell right now. So you might have to change it um, from a um, from text to columns. Like so. Um, but but yeah, but now you get the latitude and longitude. And the cool thing is, at the local level, you really need a lot more specificity, right? You can't get away with 32.73. You really need six to 10 digits after this, after the decimal point to really get the pin, like a little more accuracy in terms of where, where that point should be. Right? Good questions. Keep them coming. Um, So I'm going to walk through this a little bit. Um, I think one thing I've learned over the course of the last 15 years creating maps is I I focus a lot on the tiny tiniest details, um, the position of this la uh, this label, um, the colors of these points, um, things like that. And so, but all of that, just like you might do with a bar chart. And, and just getting it just right. And, and maybe maybe you just need to quickly make a bar chart, but sometimes we want to make it an effective bar chart. In the same way, creating an effective map, you know, you kind of focus on, I tend to focus a, a lot on just these tiny, tiny details. And in my mind, I think it makes a difference, right? Um, and I'll, I'll go through a few of these examples. Are, are the online folks okay? Like, are you? I, I assume you're. They're listening and things. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so these are kind of. I'm gonna kind of. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna walk through some of these principles that we we often think about as when we're creating maps. They're very similar, I think, in how we think about data visualizations. Um, so visual contrast is is um, how kind of the different elements in the map contrast with each other, right? So, you know, the things that you want to highlight, are they visually contrasted with everything else in the map, right? Um, legibility obviously is, you know, can you read things? Can you, can it, is it, is it clear? Uh, fig, figure ground is, 
you have a background or a base layer, do the things that you really want to highlight. Does your map kind of pop from the background? Okay, it's very similar to the visual contrast. These are obviously are, are, aren't mutually exclusive. Um, visual hierarchy, are there the things that you want to highlight, are they kind of brighter? Are they, do they pop out more compared to things that you, know, you don't want to highlight as much, right? Is there kind of some hierarchy in the way you visualized your map, right? Um, from important to less important, for example, and how do you do that? And then balance is, you know, everything, like I talked about white space, like every, does everything seem balanced in your map or your visualization? And so I'll, I'll go through a couple kind of techniques, um, how I am kind of to try to address each of these. All right, so this is the map um, as a worksheet. Um, and this is kind of what I plopped into the dashboard, essentially, right? And there's a couple of things I, I, I kind of want to kind of talk a little bit about, okay? So you'll notice that there's, you know, there's a bunch of layers. One layer in particular is this border. And I'll change the color of it just so you can see, right? So this is border. I really wanted the border to be a little thicker than everything, than all the other lines. And why is that? So I can create that visual contrast, right? So this is the border. So so if I had everything kind of, you know, everything else that was around about Will Park, you know, that could be one way to contrast things, right? Um, in this case, I made it dark. And, you know, obviously I can make it a little thicker, right? Like so, right? To really hone in on, okay, boom, this is about Will Park, right? Um, and to kind of distinguish, and especially I wanted to distinguish this border, which surrounds the Naval Medical Center, which is, I guess, technically not part of that border, right? Um, so I wanted to highlight that and kind of distinguish those lines, right? And so one way to kind of visually contrast things is the size, obviously, right? You know, I'm, I'm talking to, you know, um, I'm preaching to the choir here, right, in terms of these are kind of the same things we think about in creating other data visualizations. I wanna hone in on a couple of things also. So here, let me see if I can kind of get in there. Okay. So right here, so the history center, the the railroad museum, the model railroad museum, and the, the photography museum, right? Those are all housed in the same place, right? You notice when I when I zoom in, obviously these circles are distinguishable, right? But if I zoom out, initially when I had them, they were overlapping on top of each other. And so I had to, in this case, what I did was I went, and you can adjust the latitude and longitude, you know, using Google, and you can kind of pick different places and things like that. What I ended up doing is using QGIS to manually move the dots, the points, to where I wanted them to be placed. So that when I zoom to the entire view, these three points don't overlap, don't cover each other, and are distinguishable, even though they're in the same place. Does that make sense? Right. Another place I did that was this, these two, which I don't know what, I don't know what they are. Um, contemporary art and the International Museum. Is that where the reception was? Yeah. Yeah. So these, this, this was another example of where there were two points where that coincided to in the same location. Um, and so I had to kind of manually move these. And so that's an example of a small detail. But I think it makes, once we zoom out, I think it makes a big difference, right? So that the points aren't overlapping on top of each other. Does that make sense? Okay. So I wanted to make sure that these these two three points, these two points didn't overlap each other, and you can still see the numbers that they represented, right? And so, kind of speaking to legibility. Now, okay. In terms of hierarchy, let's go back. Um, you'll notice uh, one thing I did for the roads here. 
One thing you'll notice for the roads. Um, so this is the legend. Now the roads, when you get the the, the roads shape file from OpenStreetMap, you know I've learned over time there's a bunch of fields, but one particular field are the codes. Okay, and I and I use those these often to distinguish different types of roads. So these are major highways. These tend to be kind of streets, like major streets, um, and so forth. And and the lower the the higher the number is, the smaller in terms of the road, and, and eventually we get into pedestrian and trails and things like that. And so one way to create that visual hierarchy, right, is making the major roads darker and then the smaller roads um, lighter, right? But I also, you'll notice, I also ended up filtering some of this, right? Because if, if I included all these roads, I, I think it, it would be a lot busy busier than I would want it, right? Because it includes everything, walkways, you know, um, bicycle lanes, you know, things like that. And I didn't want all that because it would have looked too cluttered, but I included enough, but I created the visual art hierarchy by, by varying the, cult, the, the shading, the, they're all kind of black to gray, but kind of varying kind of the darkness of, of them. I also made, um, let's see, what else? Does this kind of make sense? I'm hoping I'm speaking to the, so I, I kind of spoke to visual contrast, trying to ensure L, that all the points were legible. Um, I, I'll go into figure ground in a minute and then visual hierarchy, and I'll go into balance in a minute as well. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So the little details, right? Like you might not think, Oh, making a border thicker, right? But I think in my mind, it makes a big difference, right? And I spend a lot of time thinking about this. I probably spend a lot more time than the average Tableau user thinking about maps. And so hopefully these, <laughs> these lessons learned are helpful. Okay. Next, I want to put this on a dashboard, okay? So one thing I noticed initially or originally is the kind of the the shape of Balboa Park is more kind of vertical versus horizontal, right? And so I thought, okay, maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'll create a dashboard where it's a little more vertical than horizontal. And so that's something to think about, right? Like if you're mapping something and if it looks more vertical than or horizontal, maybe in your dashboard, kind of creating the container in a way that really maximizes the shape and adjusts for the shape of whatever geographic kind of um, unit that you're focused on. So in the dashboard here, so I'm going to make this actually, I'm going to reverse these. I don't know if you can see those numbers. So I'm instead of 1000 with pixels width, I'm going to make it 800 and, and then um, 1000 pixels height, right? Just to kind of create a dashboard that's long um taller than versus long um wider okay okay and then i'm just going to plop this in this is my... Oop, that's not it is that it yeah that's it okay let me get rid of the title um and then the legends okay. and, and one of the things i'm going to quickly do is i'm going to adjust the layout so it fills the comp the entire space so zero, starting at zero, zero, and then it's 800 um, with 1,000. Okay, so it kind of looks like that. Okay, now it's already like, cause I created this, it's already the, the kind of the, the scale that it's zoomed at, it's already kind of fills the entire space, but sometimes you have to kind of play with it, right? And so one thing that I do is I often, I'll just decrease the size and then use the, um, the select option to kind of try to get as close to the dimensions as possible like so okay. and maybe shorten it a little bit or things like that right okay. so that's one thing one thing that's kind of lacking in tableau is a way to kind of zoom in or zoom out on a map at a very specific scale um you can't do that in tableau you just have to kind of guesstimate right like 
like the, the zoom, the scale that you're at. But um, so, but generally, you know, you kind of want to kind of do what, whatever looks, looks good. Right. Okay. And so in terms of balance, you know, one thing to do, think about is you have a container that has a map in your, in your, um, in your dashboard. Right. Um, you want it, you know, you don't want too much open space. Right. And so one reason to kind of look at kind of the alignment of the geographic kind of layout. So if it's the state of California, you know, you want it a little more vertical. If it's the state of Texas, you want it a little more square. If it's Tennessee or, or Virginia, maybe a little more horizontal. Right. So something to kind of think about, because then you kind of minimize the amount of geographic or inherent open space there is. Right. And then you kind of hopefully kind of maximize the space in your in your dashboard as well. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, and then again, talking about kind of balance, you know, there's this open space here. I talked a little about that that I really wanted to fill. Like it, it, it just looks kind of empty to me. Right. This part right here just looks blank to me because there's nothing here as far as all of these points. Right? There's just nothing here. So in my mind, this was wasted space. And so I wanted to kind of fill it in with something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, so this is where I put the title. This is where I put the kind of the brief description. And again, this is where I put the rest, right? Questions? <laughs> Is this helpful? I don't know. No, this is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully these, you know, and you can take some of these as like, you know, these little tips, hopefully to kind of bring into your workspace as well. Um, one thing, cool thing that happened, and this was kind of prior, this happened kind of before I really discovered Tableau is the introduction of map layers. So I, you know, I heard that how people used to create maps was through dual layers or dual access. So then you can only have kind of two layers on a map, right? Now you can have multiple layers. And, you know, and I've shown you some examples, right? So here in this main one, right? I have multiple layers that I've just piled into this map, okay? But the, the even the cooler thing about it is now you don't have to worry about the data model, right? You can just literally bring in kind of data. And as long as they're geographically aligned, they'll map onto each other as you're bringing them into the view. Okay. So let me give you kind of some examples, right? So you notice I just have, I just have a bunch of data here that I brought in as separate data sources. So Balboa Park Reporter, the places, the buildings, um, and so forth. Okay, roads, the San Diego Zoo specifically, water, et cetera. Okay. I brought these in as separate um, data sources. These are all shape files that are in the in the folder that I provided. Um, and all I need to do is select one of these and just bring them into, into the view. And I don't have to worry about the data model. They're all treated as distinct um, data sources, but because they're geographically aligned, because they're spatial, spatially, they have some spatial location to them. When I bring them in, Tableau is going to be able to just layer them on top of each other. You don't have to worry about the data model. Whereas I think in the past you had to worry about the data model. Okay. So for example, um, I'm just going to start bringing in kind of data. So there's the borders. For the border, how did you define that line? Did you manually like trace it? Uh, no, uh, there is a probably a shape file either from Census Bureau, which probably provides it, but also OpenStreetMap that designates places. So in this case, I think you know parks, for example. And so I got the border for Baboa Park by. Um, just 
saying, oh, I just want this, create a separate shape file just above park boundaries, yeah. and then brought it in. Yeah. Uh, but, but the interesting thing, just the other note is, this is not a polygon, right? These are, this is a line. So, so for that reason, then I'm able to adjust the thickness of the line because it's a line, not a polygon. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right, whereas a polygon, you can put a border, but then you can't adjust, you can't adjust the thickness of that line, that border, right? Whereas this is a line, so I can, I'm, I'm able to adjust the thickness. That was open street map? Yeah, open street map. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll show you a couple places like toward the end, because I think that seems to be what folks are interested in. Yeah, that was my question. Like, is it just a website called openstreetmap.com? No. <laughs> that, if, that was, if, that, if it was that easy, it would be awesome, right? Um, the one that I go to regularly is... You mentioned QGIS yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Is that like the workflow of OpenStreetMap into QGIS type of thing? No, the QGIS is a separate software. Okay. okay. So this is QGIS, um, and I'll show you this okay. in a minute. Sure. Yeah. But in terms of data for OpenStreetMap specifically, I go to. Um, I think this. There's this. I think there's this guy who does this, but he creates extracts of OpenStreetMap. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll copy this over so it's bigger. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Oh, that didn't work. No, that's not going to work. Sorry. Um, copy and drop it in there. Yeah, I'll drop it into. Like said, okay, where, where should I drop this? Let me see. Tableau. Back in Tableau. Take Back in Tableau. Let's see. Uh, caption, maybe, right? Maybe. Okay, so this place, and what it you're, uh, allows you to do is select, go, it, you can kind of go in to smaller geographic, like obviously if you wanted a road data, if you, for the entire world, that would be way too much data, right, for anybody to handle. And so you can go drill down. So in this case, I went to North America, um, United States, and then of course California, and then California because California is so big, um, it designates Northern California and Southern California, and then there's a place here where you can download all the shape files, and it gets I think it gets updated, you know, every so often, and I'm, um, but all the related OpenStreetMap data for that region. And I'll show you once it downloads um, the various place, the various types of data. And that's kind of where I extract a lot of this, the kind of for the base map, the roads, mm -hmm. the building, buildings and things like that. Okay. How are we doing with time? Got uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. They said I can go on, you know, as long as I wanted. So I, I still got about like an hour's worth of. Hey, you know, this is fantastic. Yeah. Could, uh, the doors are locked, so we <laughs> better enjoy it. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, and then one kind of cool tip that maybe you don't know is, so these are shape files. I did a, I did something on the, 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 the 500 bars that are in the downtown area. Uh, did another map of that. Um, so this is what a shape file looks like. I don't know if you can see that. A shape file is made up of, it, it's kind of an antiquated kind of form of data file, like filing, because it's it's kind of like bulky and clunky. And so, I but this is how I learned it. So a shape file is basically made up kind of about five or seven different files. You have to kind of keep them all together in the same folder. Plus, they have to have the same name. Um, and so you'll notice they have different extensions here. The one you kind of need to worry about most is this one, right? As long as you keep all the files together. 
And one thing you may not know, know like you can, you can just drag data into the worksheet. Did that work? And then it, it adds, it connects to the data. And then when I go back to the data here, so now, now that's a new data source right there. Now I can kind of plop it into the map and things like that. So, so how I usually add data is just, I simply just drag them, continue to drag them into the worksheet. Like it'll send you to the data pane, the data source pane, but then you go to the worksheet again, drag another one in. And then it'll take you to the data source, go back to the worksheet, drag another one in. And then you can add all of these all at once and then start mapping, making your map. But it does this thing, this weird thing with this gray square, which I don't like, which I don't know how to get rid of. <laughs> okay. Um, did it finish? Let's see. Yeah. So you have this zip file here. And when you open it up, so this is the, the zip file that I just downloaded from that website. Now it might take a little while. It's taken me a while to kind of get comfortable with, I don't use all this data, right? This is just too much. Um, but, um, so this is the shape file for buildings, land use, natural. Um, so you have to kind of figure out what all of these are. I use roads quite a bit. So here are the road files here. Um, and I'll show you what they look like in QGIS really quickly, so you know. So I'm gonna drag the road shape file in, and these are the roads for California. And then, obviously I don't need all of this when I was doing the uh, San Diego maps, so I would drill down and then clip, and then I would cut and clip just the roads that I need and then bring that into Tableau. Okay, and I'll show you an example of this, hopefully if we have time. So you know, so you know this is QGIS. So QGIS is a software. Generally, so there's different, different companies, but QGIS is a free GIS software that's specialized software dealing with spatial files. So you notice when I plopped in the shape file, it just mapped it out right away, right? And I, do, I can do that with all the files, right? And one reason I advocate and encourage people to, you know, maybe add a GIS tool to your to your belt, especially if you're interested in map making or making maps and dealing with spatial files, it's just easier for me at least to to edit, to manipulate, to prep the data, and then once I prep the, all the data, bring it into Tableau to visualize. And one of the reasons why I like visualizing maps in Tableau is because you can add all the data visualizations, you can, you can, you can design it, you, you know, it gives you a lot of kind of, it gives you a, a blank slate to kind of design a visualization or a dashboard. Um, you can add the interactivity, things like that, that are not available in a software like QGIS. But it's, so the same way that I think people use Alteryx or Tableau Prep, or even Excel, right, to prep the data. You know, I use QGIS to, to manipulate and prep spatial data in order to end before I bring it into Tableau. And I'll give you, a, give you a quick example of what I've done in the past, and hopefully it'll give you a flavor of that and maybe encourage you to kind of think about it. This is another example where I kind of played with some layers um, to kind of create a neon effect. Um, one thing that you can do, let's see, where's the map? So, so one thing I did was, um, these are four layers, right? You can see that, right? Roads, glow one, glow two, glow three. But these are all, the same data. These are all road data. Okay, so basically, I overlaid four layers of roads and then varied the thickness, the color, the opacity. 
in order to get kind of this neon effect that kind of looks like that. Does that make sense? And so, so one thing about when I, when I say take advantage of map layers, obviously you can layer, you know, I, I heard somebody had a, like 40 layers, right? So, uh, but in this case, I have four layers of roads. It's all the same data, right? It's not like you're not create, recreating data. You're connected to the same data set, right? The same road data, but I applied it four times to the view and then overlaid that and then adjust adjusted the color, the, the opacity a little bit, some thicker than others, um, some white versus kind of this neon pink color um, in order to kind of get this, what I think kind of looks like a neon kind of fluorescent effect, right? Um, and then, you know, I created this parameter kind of to, to change change the color and things like that, right? So again, it's just four layers, duplicate layers on top of each other, but varying the color and the opacity and the thickness in order to get kind of different effects. So you can think about this. I think this could be applicable in a number of different ways. Um, so for example, one way that I've used it is sometimes you want labels to be positioned in different ways but tableau only allows you to kind of format it in a single way right if it's one layer um, you could manually move them but let's say you had a hundred la labels and you you know you it would be very uh, quite a chore to kind of manually reposition all those and then when you create you know actions and things like that those labels automatically get re reset sometimes right and so one way to do that is to create different layers of different points. And then by doing so, then you can position labels like for one layer to the right, for another layer to the left and things like that. Does that make sense? Right? Okay. All right. Um, so tip five is like what I've been doing all along is using my own spatial files. And I hopefully I've, you know, I have adequately advocated and stated some of the justifications, right? I think it just gives you a lot more control in Tableau, right? Versus the map box lay, uh, background layers, which essentially to me are images, right? And, and as you play and, and kind of fit around with the maps, bringing in kind of these spatial files allow you to kind of do that. And if you're thinking about doing that, I would strongly encourage you to bring in a GIS tool and add it to your tool bed and kind of learn it, right? Um, I think there's an, a, enough resources out there to kind of learn. So I use QGIS, which is free open source um, software. Um, and I, you know, it's available on the Mac, whereas ArcGIS is not available on the Mac. So if you use a Mac, that's another reason, um, you know, things like that. But um, I would strongly encourage you to kind of think about it because what I'll show you in a minute is it's just easier to manipulate data, especially spatial data in, in a GIS tool. So I'll show you one example really quick. Okay. Um, so. So I brought in the maps. And so one thing I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to zoom into San, the San Diego area, like so. And let's say I wanted to, I don't know, like for, for this purpose, is let, let's say I want to create a circular map, OK? Like a map, like a circular map, a, a circle, and then the map of San Diego in the middle, right? OK. Um, you can do that pretty easily in, in, you can create the data pretty easily in a GIS tool and then plop that data into Tableau. So let me give you a quick example. So what, what one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new shape file and call this circle. And then this will be a polygon and I push okay. Now. I haven't created the circle, I haven't drawn the circle, but this is the new layer here called circle. These are the roads, and on top of that will be the circle. 
And so I'm going to just draw a circle. That's not a circle. <laughs> First, I need to select circle. Okay. So I'm going to draw a circle. And uh, let's, let's center it over here. Okay. And I know San Diego is a lot bigger than this, but I'm just going to do this for the sake. Now it draws a circle. Okay. Now this is a circle. Once I save it, it's basically a shape file. I can bring this in the tableau and it will map this circle. And so, so you can imagine and it's 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 located here. It's not when you bring it into Tableau, it's not going to go over to Europe or Australia. This circle is mapped right on top of San Diego. Right? And so you can imagine kind of the utilities. So one, one thing that I've done is I wanted the exact positioning on a map. So I, I've drawn a rectangle. And then I can create a locator map, kind of a small indicator map on the side. And, and using the same rectangle, show where on the United States, for example, where the bigger map is shown. You've seen that, right? Like kind of the extent, right, map, right? But Tableau really doesn't allow you to do that, right? You just kind of have to guesstimate, but by drawing a rectangle or circle, you know that this circle is going to look exactly the same regardless when you bring it into Tableau, right? So I'm going to save this circle as a shape file, and let's just call this circle San Diego. And once I bring it in, um, hopefully this will make sense. The other thing I'm going to do is. You know, so the row data is a huge, but I just want to make a circular map of the roads in San Diego. So I'm going to clip the row data based on this circle. So only the road data that's in within this circle is going to show up, create another layer, and I'm going to save that as a shape file. Does that make sense? So really quickly, clip. I'm going to clip the roads, that's the input layer, as, a, and then using this circle, okay? And so once I do that, I'm going to run it. And of course, something's not going to work once, let's see. Okay. So now I can turn off the, the main layer, and now I have just, oops, go back. Now, now I just have the roads in that circle okay and then i'm going to save that as a roads and i'm going to call this clipped is that how you kind of did the double part outline a little bit yeah way? yeah you can also select different features like in that case i just selected double park and then created a separate shape file just for Balboa Park. Yeah. But in terms of the roads, I used the Balboa Park boundary mm -hmm. and clipped the roads that just were in Balboa Park. Exactly. Okay. Now I can bring these, these shape files into Tableau. So I'm going to bring the roads in. And I'm not going to do anything yet because um, I just want to add the roads. It takes me to the data pane. I'm going to go back to the worksheet and then add the circle. Like so. Okay. Now, once I've connected to these, so here's the here's the data source for the circle, and here's the road um, clip road uh, data source. So I'm just going to add this to the, and of course it's going to look like an A because I. One thing you have to worry about now is projection, which is um, without going into like a big description, the world is a globe, not a perfect globe, but as you peel it, peel the surface and try to make a flat surface, there's different ways to do that. Those are called different projections. Tableau only uses Mercator projection. Um, and I think I created the circle based on a uh, another projection that's why it looks like an oval but that's okay right 
So the purpose of this is to make an oval map of, of San Diego. <laughs> Let me uh, make this thinner a little bit now. And then I'm going to add the circle as well. Should have changed the projection, but anyways. Okay. And so now I have the circle. All right, so this is the same circle I drew in QGIS, but it, it, it basically now is spatial data, right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I can, I can plop this on the back. I can make this, let's make this kind of black. And then I can make this kind of white a little bit. Let me, um, and then the roads, I don't need all the roads. So I'm just going to filter. And again, these are these codes, right? So I'm just going to filter to the main ones. And I've done this so many times. So I just, I'm just quickly doing this now. Let me add a couple more. And then once we do that, um, you have a oval map of San Diego right? using data that I prepared and prepped and manipulated and, or and created. I created the circle, right? I created that circle as data in a GIS tool and then brought in the Tableau to, to visualize it. The visualizing tablet. Okay. And Dennis, yeah. So when you when you brought in like, like let's say for the tablet, you brought in like the specific like points of interest. Is that in Excel or are you manipulating that? In I let me, let me think of what I did. Um, it probably started with an Excel file, but I brought that in to QGIS because I needed to manipulate some of the points a little bit. Um, like remember, I said I had to move them a little bit mm -hmm. manually. So you can do that in, in GIS, mm -hmm. in, in a GIS tool, kind okay. of manually move things. But could you, like, if, if they were right in Excel, that like, could be yeah. layered in Excel? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you would, you know, ha you would have latitude and longitude, just like mm -hmm. anything. Then you you use make point to kind of create um, the the points, the location, the geographic kind of uh, field, and then you can bring that in. Yes. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, this is my, um, you know, please connect. This is my Twitter. This is my LinkedIn. Uh, this is uh, QR code is to my link tree. Is that what it's called? Yeah, link tree, which has my Tableau public profile and other uh, other information. Um, but hopefully you found this helpful. I'm open to um, any questions that you might have. I'm bumping against eight or seven, right? Yep. Um, so, but thank you for hanging in there. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, it's great, you know, meeting all of you. Any, any questions? Any? I, I know we all absorbed it, but <laughs> I reach out. He he's uh, uh, open to reach out. You can come to us. Oh yes. Yeah, question. Um, when we playing the bubble, are, when did you have in mind whether or not that was gonna be like interactive or? Just... For the bubble park one, um, I don't think I made it interactive. So purpose of that was to create a static. But obviously, you know, I could have done different things with the map too. But um, but the purpose of that was the idea behind that was to create a static map. And so obviously, a static map needs to you, you kind of need to think about different issues versus an interactive map where the user can kind of zoom in or things like that, right? With a static map, things I think have to be even clearer, right? In some way. So I, that was what I was trying to do. I don't know if I accomplished that, but um, that was that was. Um, the purpose, the main purpose. When you're using kind of to that point, like when you're using what is it, is it GIS to mm -hmm. like break, like like you said, you use it to for the point of interest. Can you when you still label the the cover over them? I can't remember. Not in, not in the um in the yeah. In so the, in the I did have I, I do have ta uh, tool tool tips though. Let me yeah. see where is it. Um, no, let me look at the, this one. Yeah, I mean there are tool tips. Mm -hmm. So there, there is some interaction. Um, yeah, a little bit of interaction. Are, yeah. are, you, are you still able to hover over the roads? I turned that off. Because oh. I, I did um, so how do you do that? Yeah. Um, so under <laughs> any of these, so I added these layers. It doesn't it doesn't allow you to do that if there's a single layer, but if there's another layer, so like for example, um, if there's multiple layers or two, at least two layers. There's an option here to disable selection. 
So if you click on that, so if I unclick it, then I can I can hover over and it'll it'll highlight. But there's no purpose for for the reader to hover over the boundaries and have a tooltip, right? Um, and actually, that that I think that um, distracts the reason the reader as well. If if we're able to hover over all these rows, so so for any layers that I I uh, just kind of base background or. I don't have any intention for the user to select or hover over. I just disable selection for that. And now when it, when they hover, it's, it's no longer hoverable. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't know that was an option. Yeah. So there, there you go. Yeah, cool. Even one new thing. Yeah. <laughs> so does anyone know if, um, like, for you, like, bar graph and stuff, is that an option for that too? Um, I think you could just turn off. The tooltip, right? Yeah, you can turn well, off the tooltip. There's, there's but... still like a hover, though. Like it still yeah. outlines the bar. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good I'm just learning question. if there's an option like that. Yeah. I don't even know about maps. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there's probably a way. One thing that I've done here, like in case you're interested, right, um, is I learned this tip some time ago. But yeah. you'll notice that there's no highlight kind of option kind of field is in here and I have them across all of them. And I think the reason for that is like, if I select this, for example, or things like that, like some of these other things would be highlighted because everything's on top of each other. So this no highlight is basically a, a calculated mm -hmm. field with nothing. Um, I just put quotes there, right? And then I, in the dashboard, let's see where's the dashboard here. This is the dashboard. I like so I put the no highlight field in all of the layers, um, and then in the action I included an action here, uh, no highlight, um, which is basically all of the all of the layers, all of the containers, and then under selected field, I clicked on the no highlight, and for some reason this I think somehow cancels out the highlight. <laughs> Yeah. The layer. I'm not sure how it works, but I learned this tip a while ago. And so it, somehow it cancels out the highlight. So then when you're um, kind of pressing on things, it doesn't highlight everything else. Yeah. Can, can, can you turn it off and see what it looks like? Yeah, let me see. Um, I think the only way, yeah, let, me just, move and let me just remove it and see. Uh, let's see what, what happens here. Of course, nothing happens. I found this problem in other maps. It might not be a might not be a problem in this particular map, um, but it didn't do anything, right? <laughs> so there's no difference. But um, I'm not sure. Uh, let me see. Let me let me turn it back on. Let's see what's the difference. Is there any difference? Yeah. Okay. So turn back on. Uh, so so you, there is a difference, yeah, right? It, right? It doesn't like it doesn't yeah. go in and out, yeah. right? Yeah. So there is a difference. Yeah, it's something I read. Something I read. I have no idea why it works, but I've been using it, and boom, yeah. Yeah, it's. <laughs> a, you want to say how it works, but it does work. <laughs> it, it somehow cancels out the highlighting for some. It's basically some reason. Yeah. projecting a selection of everything when you select one thing. So you select okay, there you go. Highlight. Yeah, I just know it works. That's all. <laughs> okay. Cool. So in the chat, no questions, just everyone praising you oh, and, and how you. wonderful everything is and all your work. And Thank you, everybody. And uh, I, I will make sure to send all the positive comments over, but they're, they're flowing there. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm happy to entertain questions if, if anybody has any specific questions, um, but thank you so much for your time. All right, well, thank you. And to everyone virtual, we're going to wrap it up here. So I'm going to... Uh, End this. Thank you so much for everyone for logging in. It was nice seeing everyone. We'll post a video either later this week or beginning of this week. And thank you so much. You have a wonderful night. Thanks again.
So you wanna be a map superstar and live large, making maps and tableau. You gotta know it's a road full of charts. From the data to the dashboard, let's start. Big dreams, big scenes, every point counts. Data streams making scenes, building up amounts. From the raw to refine, we're breaking new grounds. Visualize the story, let the insights surround. Heat maps, flow maps, any kind of plot. Layering the data, giving it all we've got. Geocoding secrets, we're hitting the spot. Every map a masterpiece, never forgot. So you wanna be a map superstar and live large, you gotta push it far. Big data dreams traveling in fast cars. But the map game, it's a whole new art. So you wanna be a map superstar and live large, making maps that spark. Big data dreams shining like a star. But remember, it's a journey, it's hard. From the cityscapes to the mountain highs. We chart the course, see through data's eyes. Interactive elements, no surprise. Engaging stories that'll mesmerize. Drill down, zoom out, navigate the space Filtering the insights, setting the pace Custom color palettes in your face Map layers aligned, never out of place So you wanna be a map superstar And live large, you gotta push it far Big data dreams traveling in fast cars But the map game, it's a whole new art So you wanna be a map superstar And live large, making maps that spark Big data dreams shining like a star But remember, it's a journey, it's hard I point every line, every single stack Mapping out the world, no turning back From the simplest graph to the complex stack Map superstar, we're on the right track Heat maps, flow maps, every single style In Tableau, making maps worthwhile Every new project, another mile Map superstar, making data smile So you wanna be a map superstar And live large, you gotta push it far Big data dreams traveling in fast cars but the map game, it's a whole new art So you wanna be a map superstar And live large, making maps that spark Big data dreams shining like a star But remember, it's a journey, it's hard You wanna be a map superstar That blows the stage, data is the guitar Visualizing dreams, raising the bar Map superstar, that's who we are Map superstar, that's who we are Map Superstar, that's who we are. Map Superstar, that's who we are. Map Superstar, shining like a star.